So for Stop LAPD Spying, we really ground um, all of our work in what we call the stalker state. The stalker state. The stalker state. Which is basically the way that the police um, and law enforcement agencies work with um, public and private sector, um, government, um, corporations. The police um, and law enforcement agencies work with um, public and private sector, um, government, um, corporations. The police um, and law enforcement agencies work with um, public and private sector, um, government, um, corporations. And really um, in the wake of 9-11 especially, but long predating that as well, have been exchanging information and basically developing techniques to basically um, what people call pre-crime to keep on pushing the suspicion earlier and earlier in criminalizing people. Um, so this is a graphic that we use um, for the stalker state and the information sharing environment. And whoops. Um, so uh, the next thing that we're going to say is that for us in our coalition, we always um, ground ourselves in this understanding that surveillance and criminalization of youth is not a moment in time, but a continuation of history that goes all the way back to and before the founding of this country. Um, so uh, we are, um, but this campaign specifically is about the focus on how there are programs that criminalize and target youth of color, black, immigrant, um, Muslim, native, uh, Latinx, um, refugee and migrant youth um, as gang members and violent extremists. Um, and that includes um, countering violent extremism, preventing violent extremism, black identity extremism, and the gang narrative. Collectively, we call all these programs the alphabet soup just because there's so many acronyms. So um, even before all of this, what we see as a precursor to this is the Suspicious Activity Reporting Program, which was launched basically in the wake of, again, the, the attacks in 9-11. And basically in 2008, um, they started basically creating secret files on people based on different behaviors that were deemed suspicious that are actually just ordinary behaviors. Um, and when Stop LAPD Spying investigated this, we, we found out, I mean, I wasn't part of the organization at the time, but Stop LAPD Spy, Spying found out that there was a huge emphasis, it was basically racial profiling, especially of black women um, and uh, of, of black people in general. There was a huge emphasis, it was basically racial profiling, especially of black women. Um, and uh, of, of black people in general, black people in general, black people in general. The, 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 there was a hugely disproportionate, hugely disproportionate, hugely disproportionate number of secret files. Secret files. And basically, um, we see countering violent extremism and other programs as uh, extensions of this in the sense that they are anticipating violence among a group of people that are deemed to be um, inherently criminal, inherently extremist. And then they are also expanding policing and surveillance far beyond the police into everyday um, people, into uh, organizations or trusted community members, into um, the medical industries or, or counseling or schools. Um, so the first of these programs, Countering Violent Extremism, is based on a grant from, um, grants from the Department of Homeland Security it was launched um, in around 2000, I think it was 2012, oh, 2011, um, uh, based on um, uh, three pilot cities. They started off in LA, Boston, and Minneapolis, which are all cities with historic Black Muslim populations. And basically, this is a way of criminalizing communities that pretends to basically offer alternatives to policing, but is really casting greater suspicion and expanding policing, uh, again, beyond the police into other sectors of society. Um, so then another uh, example of this is the Black Identity Extremism um, report, which was leaked from the FBI. And um, they basically um, cast um, Black communities or Black people that um, we're supposed to be perceiving police violence as if it's not actually happening as basically inherently extremist or a threat to law enforcement. And um, so this um, was released 
uh, was leaked and then they supposedly ended it, but we know that it's um, constantly ongoing. That this is a legacy of and a continuation of FBI's programs like COINTELPRO, which surveilled and criminalized Black liberation movements. Um, so um, here are some examples of behaviors deemed suspicious under these programs. We have, um, you know, some things that are very typical of youth, for example, acting defiant or expressing um, your culture, um, you know, political organizing, et cetera. And um, here's uh, from FBI's Preventing Violent Extremism Guidelines, which was specifically targeted at K through 12, specifically targeted at K through 12, specifically targeted at K through 12. K through 12. K through 12. Um, so again, uh, stuff that's very typical of all youth. And, um, and then when it comes to things like being in poverty, you see very clearly that uh, it's a continuing, um, it's just um, criminalization. Um, so um, finally, the last thing is that we're um, talking about the, the expansion of these um, narratives to also include um, the pre-existing war on gangs narrative. Um, and basically now combining the war on gangs and the war on terror. So you see, for example, um, slides um, uh, that like compare um, so-called terrorists in Afghanistan to gang members in LA as um, basically very similar threats.